Welcome to this bite-sized memorable look at the world around us. I'm Jim from Nature's Work. This window on nature is looking at a range of conifer trees found in the UK. So what the talk will describe tonight is what are conifers, what are their characteristics, and where have they come from, from an evolutionary point of view. The species we'll look at in more detail are the Scots pine, the yew, juniper, silver fir, Norway spruce, and European larch. Let's first of all take an evolutionary point of view at, at plant evolution. So plants are thought to have evolved from aquatic green algae. There have been several large steps in plant evolution where they've evolved important adaptations for living on land, including being vascular, uh, developing seeds and flowers. Mosses appeared around 450 million years ago with ferns and other vascular plants forming around 360 million years ago. The first seed plants were the gymnosperms, which include the cone-bearing conifers. They appeared around 320 million years ago in the late Carboniferous era. The first flowers arrived about 125 million years ago and have developed to become the most diverse group with over 300,000 species having been identified. But what we're interested in in this talk are the conifers. And the conifers are cone-bearing plants and belong to a larger group of plants known as the gymnosperms. The gymnosperms include the conifers as well as cycads and ginkgos. And the term gymnosperm literally means naked seed. And the ovule, I'm just going to show an image here, a bit of botanical science here. The ovule, which will develop into the seed is not enclosed and lies uncovered on the scale of a cone. There's about a thousand gymnosperms alive um, in the world today. And the other term is eangiosperm, known as flowering plants, which include the daisies and strawberries and the grasses. And they differ from the gymnosperms in that they have an ovary enclosing the ovule or ovules. And the ovary then develops into a fruit, which is we're all familiar with oak. That's a little bit of the science behind it. So if I look at the different types of coniferous trees, all living conifers are woody plants and most of them are tree form. Within the conifers are the pine family and this is quite a large family and it includes the spruces, the firs, the cedars, the hemlocks and the larches. And they tend to have needle-like or blade-like leaves. Another conifer family is a cypress family, which include the junipers and the redwoods. And they tend to have scale-like leaves, as you can see in these two images here. The yews occur in a different family, which we will cover in a little while. One question I'm often asked is, is it deciduous or coniferous? And trees are often considered as being one or the other, but the two aren't opposites. Coniferous means they bear cones, and deciduous means the tree sheds the leaves in the autumn. So the opposite to deciduous is evergreen, such as the holly. Most conifers are evergreen, but there are a few exceptions, such as the larch, which is both coniferous and deciduous. So let's take a look at these six different species. We've got Scots pine, Sulpinus sylvestris, and there's a silhouette image there. It's a conifer native to the Scottish Highlands, Europe and Siberia. They generally live to 250 years old, but can survive up to 600 years. They have distinctive scaly bark, which develops plates and fissures with age, and the bark turns orange colored on the top half of the tree. So that's quite one of the key features. The needles are twisted and they're blue green and appear in pairs and can be up to seven centimeters long. The male cones are yellow and they produce all the pollen. And the female flowers grow at the tips of the new shoot and they turn bright red in May and then turn purple once they're pollinated and they mature to green and then gray brown. And they develop to about three to seven centimeters long. 
and it takes two to three summers for a cone to fully ripen. So the yew tree, the common yew, Taxus baccata, uh, is a conifer native to Europe, one of three native conifers in Britain, so the Scots pine, the yew, and the juniper we'll come to in a second. But the um, yew is common around Europe, Turkey, and across to Iran. It grows naturally on chalk downs and limestone, and also in oak woods. It's a slow growing tree and very, very long lived, some trees being over a thousand years old. And they're commonly found next to churches, and many of them are as old as the church itself. Yew was used to make longbows in the olden days, and the scientific name taxus means comes from the Greek word bow. Um, but it also yields a deadly poison, which was often used to tip the arrowheads, making them doubly fatal. The mature bark is reddish brown with purple tones, and it's, you can see there it peels quite readily. The needles are glossy and they lie flat on either side of the shoot, and they're straight with a pointed tip, dark green above and, and, and greeny grey below. And yew is uh, uh, something called, uh, known as dioecious. So it means it has a separate male and female trees. The male flowers, which are insignificant, yellow, white globe-like structures form on the male tree, whereas the female flowers develop into what's called an aril, which looks deceptively like a red berry. And it's a red fleshy growth, which surrounds the conifer seed and is attractive to birds. And the seed is dispersed by the droppings of the bird. Our third native conifer in the UK is juniper. It's common in Britain, North Eurasia and North America, and it has two classic habitats that are very different. In the North of Britain, it likes cold, rainy sites on acidic soils growing amongst heathers and bilberries. Whereas in the south, it likes the hot, dry, calcium-rich soils on parched downlands of chalk or limestone. The form is also very varied, so it can grow a low prostate form at one extreme or can grow as a conical tree at the other end. Its bark is grey-brown and peels with age. And the spiky needles are arranged in threes around the shoot and each needle-like leaf is green with a broad silver band on the inside. And they curve sharply to a, a, a sharp prickly point. Again, juniper is dioecious, meaning it's got male and female structures on separate trees. And the male structure, as you see here, are small yellow uh, structures, and they grow at the axle of the leaf near the, the tips of the twigs. And once pollinated by wind, the green female structures develop into fleshy, purple and aromatic, berry-like cone. And when young, the berries are green, but over 18 months or so, they'll mature to a nice dark purple, black colour. And they're eaten and distributed by birds, but they also provide the essential flavouring of uh, one of the world's most favourite spirits, gin. Silver fir is a conifer native to the mountains of Europe, right down from the Pyrenees to the Balkans, first introduced to Britain in 1603 and is now common in upland woodlands in the western north of Britain. Its bark is silvery and smooth and young trees have resin-filled blisters. Each of the needle has two white bands on the underside, which are the stomatal pores for the breathing pores for the, for the leaves. Um, and they're attached to the shoot via a pad. And we'll come to look at spruces in a second. They have a very slightly different structure when they, they attach. There's an image of the male flowers, but the female flowers or cones develop into this large and upright um, cone found towards the tips of the tree. So it's very difficult to see them. It's very hard to get close. And it's rare to find an intact cone on the floor because they, they um, disintegrate on the tree or they're eaten and pecked apart by, by birds. But you may see the fragments of each of those cones if you look closely. 
The Norway spruce, Pichia abius, is a conifer native to southern Scandinavia, the Alps, the Balkans, and Russia. Introduced to Britain around 1500, and it was a traditional Christmas tree. Its bark is a coppery colour and cracks into rounded plates, so very unlike the fir, which are, are more smooth. The dark green needles have white bands on the underneath, and the sheet is orange, and each needle is attached to the sheet with a small wooden peg. You can see in that image there, whereas the furs are attached with a round pad. The needles do go to a, a point, um, but they're not, uh, they're generally softer than um, its widely planted timber cousin, the Sitka spruce, which is known for being very spiky. Its cones are very long and develop to 20 centimetres long, scaly, wavy edges, and they hang down, whereas the fir cones point upwards. Finally, we'll have a look at European larch, Larix decidua. It's a conifer native to the Alps and central European mountains, introduced to Britain about 1620. The bark is a beautiful, pinkish brown and develops wide vertical fissures with age. Um, and it's a deciduous conifer with the leaves turning golden before falling in the autumn. The bright green needles grow in clusters of between 20 and 30 needles, and they're born on a short um, stem called a spur. The male flowers are globular clusters of creamy yellow on the underside of the shoots, and each one releases pollen for a day but the tree releases pollen for a period of two weeks in March to April. The female structures grow at the tips of the shoot and are often referred to as larch roses. They comprise flower-like clusters of scales in pink, green and white. And after pollination by the wind, the female cones ripen becoming brown and gradually open their scales to release the wing seeds. Press like if you've enjoyed this presentation and write any comments. Uh, see you next time for more Windows on Nature.